Fred here, welcome back to the Gear Obsession channel. In this episode, we will be taking a look at the Gerber <laughs> Gator Machete Jr. Please stay tuned. Before we get started, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the packaging. Have a flyby. You can see on the back is the sheath and some instructions. They do provide a lot of specifications, although it's kind of disappointing that they sort of state that the blade material is high carbon steel. Again, Gerber Mystery Steel, whatever. You can see that there, it's a product of Fisker. I guess uh, Gerber is owned by Fisker, and of course it is made in China. Okay, save some time. I did the unpackaging already. You can see there's a lanyard here, but it's not a lanyard that you put around your wrist when you're using it, and we'll talk about that here shortly. Um, the first thing you notice when you get this out of the packaging is the grip. You can see how big it is. It's uh, very comfortable. It's like a um, gator skin, but it's like rubbery, and it really gives you a, a really good control. The next thing you'll notice is that the blade stock is very thin. It's almost like stamped, <laughs> stamped sheet metal. So um, it does uh, flex a little bit, as you can see. So this is not a, a top quality tool here, but we're talking, you know, $15 at its lowest end. I've seen it as expensive as $22, but uh, for the most part, it's about $18 to $20. The uh, Gerber puts a little point protector on here. Pull that off. They put a hole here. Uh, I'm guessing it's so you can hang it up. <laughs> I don't know. It also saves a little weight. You can see it's a saw back, and it's uh, get you close up with the teeth there. It's like two rows of teeth that are staggered, like a, a normal saw would have. Then you have this edge. Now, out of the box, it's uh, it's not like super dull, but it's not super sharp either. It's not sharp enough to cut paper. Let me see. I'll, I'll see if I can cut my notes here. Nope. <laughs> so not sharp enough to cut paper. But you got to remember with machetes and an outdoor tool such as this, you're not going to get that um, angle, the blade angle, really, really, you know, thin. Because if you did, the first time you whack on something, it's going to go ahead and, and chip the edge. So you have a, a wider angle on the edge. So I can understand that. And that, that makes it kind of weird to sharp if you're used to sharpening knives, um, especially sharpeners, you know, such as these guys. They're usually for um, knives and not machetes. You can see there's some bolts that go through this. Looks like it uses some hex screws there. And um, I don't know. You have uh, some protectors here for your hands so they can't go any further on the top and bottom. Now the next thing, let's talk about this lanyard really quick. If you read the instructions you'd know this. I see some people on YouTube um, put this around their arm and they say oh it's not big enough where I can't get it you know around my hand well it's not supposed to go like that what it's supposed to do is you're supposed to put it like this this way it doesn't slip and it's really important when you're sawing so let me um, throw this on here and you can see that when you're sawing it'll prevent it'll prevent your hand from slipping off this handle and onto the edge so that's what this is for before we start having some fun let's go over the specifications really quick overall length is 18.75 inches the blade length is 10.75 inches the weight is a very light 14.3 ounces it is made of high carbon mystery steel um, you also have this Gator tactical grip, really, really great handle, I can't stress that enough. You get a nylon sheath, here is the sheath, it's, uh, it's decent, I hate Velcro, but it has it. And um, you can see there's some rivets here, it is double stitched, which I do like around the seams, or at least uh, around this part, now around the top it is single stitched, and it has a belt loop right here and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put this on so you can sort of see how that looks when you're wearing it 
Now for all truthfulness, this really is not a very practical machete. It's very short, but the first thing that came to mind when I saw it was zombie apocalypse and uh, survival out there. But, you know, it's not a good, you know, chopping through the, the bush or jungle kind of machete. You really need a, a, a full-size one. But this could be a great little uh, survival tool for the budget-minded. You know, someone who doesn't have a lot of money and you're just trying to get something together before... I don't know, December 21st. <laughs> but anyway, um, I sort of had this idea that I should uh, just sort of throw it on, put it on the opposite side so I could do a sort of cross draw, and you could sort of just pull it out really quick at a cross draw. And there it is. Now it would be very hard to sort of do this with a full size machete. Um, it could possibly work for, you know, a, a shorter parang, such as the Bear Grylls parang, but the sheath is sort of made where you can't just pull it out. But that's a, a good comparison for this guy. So it's time to have some fun with, with this, so um, let's have some fun. So in the supermarket, I picked up some of these uh, little miniature pumpkins in the gourd section, whatever that is. And uh, we'll go ahead and see if I can get enough accuracy out of myself to go ahead and chop this. Again, that's the way you want to have this on. Keeps it from slipping. Okay, well I just took the top off. There we go. So, try this again. I'm going to try like a sideways motion following through. There we go. So it's uh, sharp enough to get through a, a gourd. <laughs> and, it, and it's already started batoning this wood. So it does a pretty good job. So I went ahead and got a branch out of the woods. It's about a one inch thick and I thought we'd go ahead and check out the saw side of this. bad. Let's uh, let's hack on this side a little bit and just see how well it does. Too bad. So you can get through a branch this thick <laughs> using either side. Let's see if we could do a little bit of fine uh, whittling. Not too bad. So I'm going to go ahead and break out the sharper, and I want to see uh, how well this steel sharpens. Now, I've showed this off before. I got it set to about 24, 
degree angle. And I just want to see if this could actually get sharp enough to cut paper. You know, I could tell by the the metal shavings that the metal is, is fairly soft. And you don't want very hard metal on a machete because it'll just, you know, the blade will just chip. Wow, it, it actually took an edge rather quickly. Wow, very, very sharp. So let me, uh, get, let me get my notes off the camera here. Sorry, folks. Um, it got a uh, razor sharp. That's uh, d probably due to just the uh, high carbon steel just being soft. Okay, I think I really covered all the specifications. Again, the, the pros for this is the price. It's, it's very cheap, it's light, it's compact, so it's easy to carry around. And the grip actually is is very very good. The downside is it comes dull. It, it's a softer metal. It's made in China, and it's uh, not ideal for like cutting through bush, brush, or, or stuff like that, which is what a regular machete would be used for. This uh, really is sort of a, an interesting class. It's sort of a good all-purpose tool. It's, it's good for maybe camping. Um, good for the zombie apocalypse, end of the world prepper kind of thing, you know, just something lightweight, small, easy to carry. You could do a cross drawer with it and have it ready. However, um, because of the steel, I highly recommend that you have some sort of sharpener with you. At least it's very easy to sharpen in the field. So this could be your zombie <laughs> value weapon. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, they do put that stupid warning that's impossible to get off of this thing. You know, who cares? Leave it on there. At least it'll help protect this part of the <laughs> blade for a little while against rust. So, do I recommend it? Sure, I recommend it. I mean, for the price, um, it's a good all-purpose uh, tool, as long as you know what it's for. <laughs> Which I'm not too sure, but, um, you know, good camping tool. Good uh, everyday carry. No, just kidding. So... I recommend it. I give it an 8 out of 10. So, thank you very much for joining me here at the Gear Obsession channel. I really appreciate every friend, viewer, subscriber, and you. <laughs> and I hope you have a, a great day.